all right how's it going everybody um i wanted to do a video uh right quick well it won't be right quick uh so those for that are new and thanks for um tuning in um but i'm gonna try to do this as fast as i can even though it's gonna be a very lengthy subject um but i want to try to get some clarification on uh, so we can just focus on uh, the, the most important thing which is making good music right um, first of all um, if you are new to the music world you probably now you're if you're even whether you're working in a DAW a hybrid system system or you came from the analog world um, you got to remember we all the people that are new to this can have to understand the recording system and the tools we're using today are just adaptations or changes to what used to be and what we had to do it's kind of like the telephone. If you go back in the history of all things, whether it's a car, a telephone, light bulbs, um, the history of things that were functioning in the 60s or the 40s or the 20s compared to the, the 2000s. And, of course, it's 2024. And, of course, you know, in the next 30, 40, 100 years, whatever, most of us will probably be gone 100 years from now. Um, but all the people that are living in that time frame, um, who knows what we'll be doing? Um, I got a strong feeling that the people are still going to make music, uh, but I got a strong feeling that it will not probably, these will probably be non-existent a hundred years from now. Um, but I don't think, uh, MIDI controllers and DAWs and plugins, that's just going to be a standard recording system um a hundred years from now so all the people that are analog people let's say you're 50 60 70 years old and you're you're dying you'll be dead and gone before you know in a hundred years I, I will be dead and gone in a hundred years um because i won't live to be 155 years old i don't know anyone that lives that long but um maybe you know tortoises turtles or turtles or how you want to tortoises or you know how you want to pronounce it they can live a long time some tortoises are up 200 years but they just can't make music <laughs> they just um but anyhow so getting to the getting to the heart of the subject so i'm going to try to do some clarification a little bit in this video on why why do you uh, i'm sure everyone new or old are always in the, the, the debate between analog and digital and what's the obsession with tape machines and and why do i keep hearing about you know the controversy between do you need a mixing console or you don't need a mixing console and all okay in that case first of all you have to remember the the recording platforms if you don't know the recording platforms you have to know this in the day we had to record a tape Com computers the computers of what computers can do today and how powerful they are today have only been this way for about 15, 20 years. That is it. They are not, yeah, computers have been around, um, but they are nowhere near to the level and it's simply because they keep making the, the CPUs more and more capable. I mean, you're talking these two you know two core four core six core processing eight core process you know uh, i keep saying you know eight core processing um and yeah remember this this little this little cpu is made of billions of transistors uh, now to understand a transistor a transistor is nothing but a switch so if we look at it on paper 
a transistor looks something like this you know I'm gonna try to um, I'm gonna try to it looks a circuit looks something like that you know that's pretty much a transistor circuit the old transistor circuits were tubes I'm pulling out an old tube right here <laughs> uh, early days electronics they didn't have solid state which is basically non tube everything had to go through a tube that was your switch so you would have a le early electronics of the 20s and all that would have everything would have to go through a tube which is the circuits of a tube is more like a heater element um the bottom one here would be more like a tube circuit um and i'm gonna pull up on my uh i'm gonna pull up on my uh my uh mac here i'm gonna pull up on google I'm going to put in transistor versus tube circuit. Y'all love Google. Before you, years ago, you had to go through an encyclopedia and science books like that. You had to literally grab a book off the, you know, you had to grab your books off the uh, shelf. But now you can just Google stuff. And they, of course, you had to got NPN, which stands for negative, positive, negative. Or PNP, which stands for positive, negative, positive, right? So, yeah, it's kind of like, um, let me see if I can't, um, I don't want to YouTube it. I uh, just want to, let me go to images. Okay. So you kind of understand what's going on. And there are sophisticated types of transistors. You know, there's field effect transistors, or what we call FET, or MOSFET, which stands for Metal Oxidized Field Effect Transform uh, Transistor. Uh, MOSFETs like that would be in like, they would put MOSFETs in like stereo amplifiers in car stereo systems and stuff like that so the tube would have a um let me see a tube circuit diagram um i'm just gonna put tube circuit diagram uh, and you can google this for yourself yeah just google it for yourself uh a tube circuit diagram right So, so what's going on is there's a power source. So what's going on with this tube? You hear tubes, right? There's an element. So what's going on with this tube? There's an element in this tube that's heating up and the signal coming through it is being saturated and then the, and it, and it creates an output it also act as a switch so that's why tubes are such a big thing but there's also nothing in the circuit what they call step up and step down transformers then there's other things that you know if you ever look at an operation or an operational amplifier what we call an op amp and then there's other circuits such as just a regular amplifier and amplifiers consist of an amplifier which is consist of a few resistors and amplifier circuit and that's how you're able to increase uh, and they would have a variable there is a variable resistor to control the output signal of a resistor you like your volume control on your on your stereo in your car your house 
your computer, your speaker monitor, and all that, those are variable resistors that in, that controls the voltage of the amplifier for the output. So I know it's been 10 minutes. Like I said, this is a very lengthy subject. And I'm trying to really go into details on why it's such the big deal with, with why people especially my age and all why are we so obsessed why do we the console and outboard gear and and all this why would you know and i'm trying to one well let me get to i'm gonna try to show you a couple examples here is a microphone this is a marshall it's number 2000 it's a marshall model number 2006 not the years made that's just the model of the of the microphone if I open this microphone up, this microphone, other than of course, all microphones inside here has a as a capsule to capture the signal. So I'm not going to insult anyone's intelligence about how microphones. People are very well that if you're talking to a microphone, it's going to capture your voice or whatever it's capturing, and it's going to send it down to through the cable to go to the recording source. I'm not going to insult anyone's intelligence like that. People know where microphones are. But may, people may not understand, this has a very few, very basic electronics in here. If you ever look at it, it's, it's just a couple of circuit boards in here. And on this circuit board is just a couple of, resist, just a couple of uh, some resistors and capacitors and some diodes. That's it. There's very, a couple of electric little capacitors. Uh, there's some uh, different style capacitors here. Uh, depends on you know the, the what we call ferrets the my cap uh, capacitors are me measured in ferrets I'm, uh, I'm saying that right and then there's resistors you know color code resistors and that's it so whenever you turn this is a condition mic so when you turn on the phantom power it powers so this microphone can have enough voltage to capture the signal so you can see here it's a very basic microphone so um, and microphones I'll, I'll go into details about microphones in another video which I'll go into details about preamps I'm going to talk about the different preamps like the Avalons the ne the Neve style my Altrons or Neve styles my warm audio and all my preamps I'm going to talk about those in a different video but the microphone um, so you're probably saying, okay, okay, there's electronics in there, okay. So what makes this microphone, and then I'm gonna go into my other microphone here, which is a tube microphone. It is a tube microphone. This microphone still has circuit boards in it, but it actually has a few extra components in here that's going to give this microphone a lot more warmth in vocal to the source you're capturing. And the difference between that microphone and this microphone is not only does it have not only does it have capacitors like the other board. Look at the size of these capacitors in here. Way bigger capacitors in here. The capacitor components in here are way bigger. Capacitors and resistors is what it's kind of like if you ever look at a EQ circuit. There's uh, there's basically amplifiers, resistors, and capacitors, and a different size capacitors is going to determine the frequency of the EQ. So, in other words, if you have an EQ, a twelve thousand uh, frequency EQ, it's going to have a way smaller capacitor than if you have an EQ like. A uh, hundred hertz of EQ or frequency is going to be a way bigger capacitor. The op amp you're going to use the resistor, variable resistor, which is your EQ knob. That's controlling how much voltage amplifier that's amplifying that frequency by your variable resistor, so that you can hear how much frequency when the signal crosses that particular frequency. So you can see here dramatically in this microphone. The capacity components in here are way more, they're bigger. 
which is going to make one it's going to make it's going to give this microphone a lot more um volume and worth more headroom and everything else but there's a, two other things there is a transformer in here i mean right here transformer and a tube the tube and the transformer is going to give this microphone a lot more warmth to the signal and because of the volume it takes to push this microphone there's there is a an external source um put this in here so with these two microphones and of course because it's a tube microphone it requires a real tube circuit requires a lot of voltage so that's why they come with a power supply like this to drive the tube of the microphone. If you ever, you ever turn on a tube microphone and once it warms up, you feel, touch the microphone, it's gonna feel warm. Cause that, that voltage is driving the tube to drive that tube. This is also happening in stuff like preamps that are two preamps, they get, they they have a lot because they have tubes in there they have some serious transformer and power supplies units to drive those tubes that's what's driving the warmth that's why tube usually tends to sound fatter and warmer so what i'm trying to say with all this is the same thing when you're driving in here in your console there are circuits there are operational amplifiers, there are resistors, there's capacitors, the electronics, the signal passing through the electronics is what's driving that um, through the preamp section and, and everything else on the console is driving the warmth. Um, and this, this is the reason why if you recorded vocals, not saying because it's a condenser mic, not saying the vocals will sound bad with this microphone they will sound decent um they definitely would sound usable for recording if you had just marshall microphone you bought this marshall microphone it would sound usable and you're like man okay that sounds good okay i can reuse that but then even if you use this microphone and ran it through the same preamp you know my those Altrons or their warm audio or the Avalons or whatever preamp, it would sound usable. Even the preamp on the console, it would sound okay. I, okay. But then there is some, there's details. There's details in the recording source. I don't care if it's a singer, a guitar, drums. Even the breath of a singer, when a person sings that breath, it's kind of like right now, me recording this video, I'm using the condenser microphone going through my mixer with phantom power. So my vocals sound warmer when I use this microphone than when I use the microphone from my webcam. It always sounds thinner. Um, and pay attention to that. Listen to some videos that I do when I don't, you know, pay attention to how my vocals sound in certain videos, especially some of my older videos where I didn't use this microphone. And I'm gonna use this microphone, then sometimes I'm not gonna use the microphone. And I want people that watch my videos to say, oh, you're not using your condenser microphone. And this microphone's definitely gonna sound warmer, uh, just a little bit beefier because I'm going through a mixer, it's got an EQ on it and a little compressor and it sounds warmer in the recording. So when you record vocals, when your vocals are recorded through a tube microphone like this, your vocals in your mix through a tube microphone and a really good preamp and a really good signal chain. I mean, in other words, like 
one of the biggest things is like the Sony 800C. I think it's the 800C or C800G. It, it's it's a tube microphone, but it's got a heat sink on it. Very popular for like the hip hop community, but it's also very popular in R&B. But also, two microphones all together for recording. I don't care what genre. It could be pop. It could be rock, country. Two microphones are like some of the number one go-to pieces of microphones. This is called the Badax T11. This is a modified. The T1 and T11A is basically a version of the AKG C12. AKG C12 microphone is a is basically a twenty thousand dollar microphone. Well, this microphone has been modded with all the exact same components of a C12, so it's basically it's a C. It's a C12. Um, the warmth of this microphone, um, I guess I had to do a demonstration. I did a demonstration where I changed out the capacitors on a Marshall MXL. 990 microphone you probably have to go back and look at my videos and look at that 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 demonstration between the two if i, I hope i didn't take it down i had to go back and check if i took it down it's because i didn't get enough views on it um the here the a and b difference between those two microphones so this is the reason why um two microphones are usually some of the go-to now it's not always used for everything sometimes they use cm sm sm7s and dynamic microphones like sm58s or 57s uh sometimes they use ribbon microphones but majority of most people that record vocal mics with a condenser mic the two microphone is most preferred because of the warmth and it's because that power supply is driving that tube which is now you know that circuit that tube Coming through that transformer, it just sounds warmer and more pleasing in your vocal, in your recording. So, so because of that, tube, tubes have to be driven with a lot more voltage. The reason why they kind of came up with the with the solid state transistor which means the little it's basically it does the same job as a tube as a switch but it didn't require nowhere near as much voltage to run but it's it's what you'll hear this last thing i'm gonna try to talk about is what they call even and order harmonics it's like you have a two if you if you have a signal the, it's kind of like you heard this thing harmony whenever a chord you know you hear someone da, 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 da. you hear these harmonies all at the same time for people to make these harmonies and then it makes these rich sounding harmonies together right well they have these Harmonies, but there it's like how can I describe when these harmonics? It's like it's doing the same thing almost, but not quite. But it's like the signal's doubling and tripling at a to a point, as the best way I can just describe it. And they call it even order, meaning the numbers in order, harmonics or odd order of harmonics, meaning. If you had even, you have the, the actual frequency tone or whatever, the tone or signal, then you would have, there's another harmonic or tone created with it at the same time, but it's only a second above that original. Then another even would be skip the third and go to the fourth. Skip the fourth and go to the sixth. Skip the sixth and go to the eighth. And just goes on, keep going to create these harmonic differences all at the same time but the, the sound is thickening and they call it even order of harmonics but if you have these odd order harmonics meaning you have the signal then you skip one skip the second go to the third skip the fourth go to the fifth skip the sixth go to the seventh they're order they're, they're odd harmonics being created at the same time but it's also they call it a saturation 
and and also harmonic distortion. It was almost, but it's like a pleasing distortion. It's not like a, you know, like a an annoying distortion. It's almost like a. So there's a quite a few factors into what's making these tones sound the way they do. Um, the problem with digital or the the limitations of digital the limitations of digital is digital itself isn't sound digital is binary so whenever people say analog versus digital you remember analog we can hear digital you can't hear only computer can understand the digital so that's why everything that's converted from analog has to be converted into digital binary code and the computer takes those it's a lot of complicated computer algorithms and everything else and processing to turn that into signal which is a it's nothing but ones and zeros if you ever listen to digital it's kind of like you ever heard you know it's kind of like a computer going it's reading these ones and zeros a combination of so many billion uh, different combinations of ones and zeros creates billions of different outputs uh, including if you hit the letter A on your keyboard that's a binary code to make the letter A appear on your screen the thing is when you're watching a computer screen you're watching pixels um, of generated you know like in other words you're watching me through your computer monitor it's not um, an actual physical like me for real it's generated and so the computer is taking the video and processing it like if you if you paused if you paused like took a picture of this video right now you took a picture of this video and then you zoomed in as much as possible everything will start become you will start to see the pixels you'll start like real like the browns and the whites and the, all the different color which is generated it's called rgb red greens and blues um but all these millions of pixels you zoom in you can actually start seeing the pixels it's like with video versus photo Fo videos is nothing but a billion or i ain't gonna say billion uh, it's like so many frames of a photo but you're seeing it at the same time um we've all done it maybe you haven't done it they used to do this where you would take a book and you would take one piece of paper and draw a figure and then the next you turn the next page you would draw the figure but you would move the arm a, a fraction take the next picture on the next page you move the friction you know arm a fraction again and you know the next day so they would take a bunch of photos all together it's kind of like a, if you ever look at the old film strips that's why we have film strip film strip film strip film strip of a picture 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 they call it motion pictures right so the picture 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 but it would be the the, the only difference between these motion picture would be that one frame something slightly moved so when you took these 24 of these pictures in a in a given second it would look like something moved just like my arm is moving in this video it's just moving at 30 frames a second for this video it's 30 pictures at the same time well that's what's going on and sampling rate that's what's going on with sampling rate of sound in your ad to da converter to make sound for recording in digital it's taking all these sounds it's just sampling it at so many you know in other words 44.1 that's how fast is sampling is sampling that tone so whenever you're recording a beat a sound an instrument in, or whatever it samples it 40 like for example cd quality was 44,100 frequencies or that made sample rates that fast that's why some people change it to 48,000 sampling rate so that's why the only reason why you'll say well you might ask yourself well okay that probably makes sense it's sampling that sound and when you're listening back to convert it from your ad to back from digital to analog you're listening to a, a 
44 thousands or 48 thousand samples like that which makes it sound like music but it's what it's doing is it's converting those samples so you can hear back as the same way if you're watching a video because you wouldn't watch a video if you watched every single frame of a single video frame of a I don't care if it's a motion picture uh, a video that you saw you know whatever film or whatever if you watched every single page a second it'd be just I would it'd be like this would be this would look, look like instead of me just being motion like the videos recording uh, at 30 frames a second if I did one frame a second it'd be like That's what in one frame, but because I'm moving my everything you watch in the video is moving at 30 frames a second. That's why they can tell you when you watch set up your if you're doing a YouTube blog or making a video to change your frame rate. The standard for vid for film was at 24 frames a second. Uh live venues broadcasting, regular broad streaming, and everything was 30 frames a second. So this video really is playing at 30 frames a second. Here's another crazy thing that you probably didn't realize what was going on with frequency. You probably seeing 120 volts, you probably seeing 60 hertz. You probably heard of that from most electronic gear. In the United States, the standard is 110, 120 volts, um, 60 hertz. What you may not understand is your lights are turning on and off 60 times a second. It's turning off so fast because a second's like that, right? 1,001. That's a second, right? 1,001, that means your lights turn on and off 60 times. This is why they call it alternating current. You can, there's a little history. When they was making direct current versus um, alternating current, they found out, Tesla found out Voters can travel faster if you send it in a wave, in an alternating wave. So we go, you know, we go into the positive, go to negative, and the wave, it, it ripples. Kind of like this versus direct. Direct doesn't travel as fast. That's why DC current. So uh, Edison wanted to create direct DC power supplies every mile. You know how, what kind of pollution you would have created if they went with the DC system? Every mile would be a DC power plant versus you have one power plant that can send voltage across the entire city miles, miles from one power supply system, meaning alternating current. This is what's happening in your alternator in your car, too. That's why it's called an alternator. It's converting 120 volts. Well, let me anyhow. The back of the regulator converts it from 120 volts down to 12 volts so your car can use because your car is used to put as a 12 volt system that's why your battery is 12 volts everything running your car is 12 volts but the alternator is producing 120 volts it just converts it down to 12 volts um different story different video so going back to um the sampling rate the sampling rate this is why you would hear and then the bit processing, 16-bit versus 24-bit, 192 sampling rate, and that's why they said uh, the the 24-bit versus 16 versus 16-bit versus 24-bit, 16-bit 44.1 thousand 44 point or 100 kilohertz of frequency of sampling compared to 24-bit 48 or 96 or 192. The more, you know, but the thing is most people's PC or Macs didn't have enough processing power and buffer speed and how much you can put in the RAM and the buffer speed to catch up with all those samples coming at it at the so fast. Bam. So the, the if the CPU would overheat and the log up, it'll so that's why they don't recommend if your PC or your Mac isn't powerful enough to handle that much data. That's why you have to go into your settings and change your buffer and your sampling rate and everything else. This is why they tell you to record at a lower sampling rate 
so your computer can handle all the information coming in. That's why they, a lot of times they tell you to change your sample, you know, from uh, one ten twenty eight to five at least five twelve or two fifty six or one twenty eight. So the the computer processing in the RAM can keep up with all the information that you're recording through your interface. And then once you've gotten everything, a lot of times it can spit the data out faster than it can record it. That's why they tell you to turn it up to 1028 or 2056 or whatever when you've done recording for for playback. Most people forget to do that. So that's why I tell you, if you forget to do that, a good number is like 512 for the set in your computers. So it doesn't lock, block, so it doesn't, um, so your computer doesn't lock up because it's trying to handle not in the recording, then you got plugins and all this other stuff. But anyhow, so to make a long story short, the sampling rate and all this makes a difference versus listening to something analog. Uh, this is why analog has zero latency because the latency is the is the time frame from the time you try to do something to the time the computer can let you know you did something, and it could be. You know, it's kind of it's annoying when you hit a note and it, you hear it microseconds late, like, dun, dun, dun. or I can go, dun, 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 or whatever, right? Hitting your notes or whatever, that's annoying because by the time that signal gets to your computer, your latency, you got to, a lot of times, you got too much data coming to your computer CPU. And you don't have enough RAM to process that fast enough. Uh, so you have to tame all that stuff down so you can finally. Dun, dun, da, 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 da. Um, but so to sum up the video, because it's like it's 37 minutes. I, like I said, this is a lengthy subject. So to go back, um, to finally go back to what I was saying, going originally back to analog. The key component to why analog sounds so good, and this is the reason why they're trying to come up with every bit of software to make it sound like analog as much as possible. Um, this is why 32, 64-bit systems sound better than 32-bit systems um, in Windows and Mac because, and I have to get into a different video on bit, you know, um, versus 24-bit. And it gets to those algorithms of creating millions versus billions. Um, 24 bit can create billions versus 64 bit can only create millions. Um, it's a, it's a, it gets into a lot of complicated numbering. Uh, too much in this video to start explaining. You know, it's kind of like with I, you know, IP addresses and submass and subnet and anyhow. So your circuits. The circuits in the in the in, the, in your electric in your analog gear is doing is saturating and creating warmth in the signal, and this is the reason why you need to have a fast enough computer that can keep up, and the sampling rate and the A D to D conversion um, need to be able to keep up with the processing of making something and digital that's being converted back to analog keep up to make the samples sound like a real thing this is the reason why um this is the reason why stuff sounds better today than it did 30 years ago because an 8-bit an 8-bit sample could not reproduce the real the realness of a something that was sampled like a guitar or a trumpet or trombone or violin or a string instrument or guitar whatever it because of a bit this didn't have enough processing versus something that went 16 bit versus 128 bit 30 you know when you're talking about more powerful processing systems more powerful pcpus and things like that produces way more ability to make that sample sound more realistic and this is why it was you know whether it's you know why it's they they're doing this with with drum machine like mpcs or the rolling rv8000s or 
or with drum samples, um, keyboards today, um, virtual instruments, VST, virtual, which stands for virtual studio technology, um, VSTs, are, are just digital. Everything is, they're trying to, they're, the processing of these samples to make them so, so that's why computers and PCs and Macs have to be a lot more powerful to handle the processing of than they were, you know. And I was gonna use one more last example. It's kinda like, my last example would be, there's a reason why, there's a lot of factors. So why if you, t this is my Nikon, my 328, this is a 24, it's a 24.5 megapixel um, uh, camera. There's a reason why if you took photos with this phone, this is my Android. You know, it's got cameras. You know, we are familiar with we are familiar with cameras on your phone. Versus a camera like this, but you can see the lens on here. There's so many factors. One, the lens, the the photos, and of course, you know, with the flash and the, the sensor. But the biggest key is the sensor in this phone. It's probably not even the size of my pinky. It's probably one fourth the size of my pinky. Trying to capture so much image data, image. You know, it's trying to capture all this lighting and image versus, versus, the image, the sensor size of my camera. Is like, this is a full frame. Um, in here, you can barely. I don't know if you can see it. The sensor in here. You can see is way way bigger. It can capture a ton more detail, a ton more detail, and this is the reason why photos with a, like this with the sensor on here, the sensor in here, um, along with this lens compared to these tiny little tiny little lenses on the back of this camera, compared to the size of this lens. And that tiny little light on the back of the phone, that tiny little light compared to this flash, this flash can produce a ton more light, the, the light up the image. This lens can capture a lot more detail. The sensor can capture a lot more. That's why the photos on this, that's why these phones are never beat cameras like this. They, there's a whole bunch of argument that they're using AI technology and everything else to make phones look as good as cameras like this, but no. And today they increase the, the lens sizes on here, the, the the lighting and the sensor that's how you're gonna get these phones that's how the only way you can get an Android or an app or an um, um, you know that's how you're gonna get an Android or a, um, or an iPhone and they're gonna be the people that are gonna I'm, I'm taking photos yes I'm not saying the photos look bad and to you that's gonna be a different video so I'm going to sum up the video. I want to use that analogy. Um, that's a whole different video on why, you know, TV stations use the cameras they use and why they still use professional digital cinema cameras like the red and the area Alexa and all these different pro level cameras that do film, not Androids or iPhones. Um, you know, they're taking videos and films with it. let me tell you anyhow so the sum of the video because it's 40 like I said this is a very lengthy subject getting back to to sum up getting back to sum up um, what I was saying about the end it's the circuits of the electronic gear that's making the difference so when you when you got when you have you know when you have a really good ADDDA converter many your interface sampling warmer fatter nicer fatter signals I don't care what instrument or vocals whatever when it's sampling that and that's going to convert to digital for the computer understand one zeros and when you listen back meaning it converts it from digital back to analog that's why they tend to sound warmer this is the reason why when you use virtual instruments and 
keyboards and all that the samples in those keyboards or the fatter the sounds of using an analog synthesizer the fatter the signal with a better processing it's going to make it's going to sound fatter and warmer and this is what we're all trying to capture i don't care if it's an 808 drum a snare a hi-hat vocals i don't care what it is guitar the fatter and warmer the signal and the better the converter and using that whether using samples or a real thing samples from a vst instrument or an actual real source this is the reason why psychology is kind of like versus well anyhow i'm done with the video because it's 45 minutes that's the best way i can describe why there's still such a push pull um why it's such a push pull analog versus digital um and it's really not the digital that they're fighting it's the the, the billing for the computer to <coughs> It's the sampling and the digital processing of listening to something to see how realistic it sounds to analog that we're really debating. It's kind of like a VST instrument, um, like a real violin and then listening to a virtual a VST, is, VST sample of a violin. How close are they it's kind of like, well, I need an actual violin player playing a real violin, and I'm going to need a really good microphone to capture that violin, versus if I can use a someone that samples that violin that's playing that same tone, and it sounds as close as possible to a real violin that's playing an instrument. And so when the computer converts that analog or use that, that sampled sound or whatever the case, that's the fight because a lot of times people will argue well the, if i can eliminate the size and the weight of one of these and use a sample and create the same thing and i'm talking about with plugins i'm talking about with compressors eqs reverb units whatever and eliminate all the need to have so much bulky gear Versus people like, well, no matter what, because you're still using samples and you're using software processing, the, the people that are arguing with the digital and the analog is they're saying that, and I can understand why they're saying this, the hardest thing to supplement is actual electronic signals. The best way I can end the video, um, I'll put my microphone up. The best way I can describe, and let me pull my microphone back up, um, is this is the digital world. There are two microphones, even though this is an actual, I'm using this. You've seen the electronics. Um, let me open them back up one more time because you can't confuse the two. Um, okay. Even though these, even though I wish I used this analogy earlier, even though these are two condenser microphones, digital, digital, and what this microphone is doing to capture the signal is trying to produce with the AD to DA converter and the sampling capability of what it's doing it's trying to digital it's trying to produce the even and order harmonics or the harmonics and the saturation of what this tube transformer microphone with the with everything that this microphone is producing as far as the warmth digital is trying to do the same thing but with maybe i can do this with processing and and I'm going to use some manipulation in the software to make the sound as warm as possible in digital world to this two microphone. The thing is, there are a lot of people in the music industry that says no matter what you do with digital trying to, to produce this, 
because the digital is lacking the two key components that's making this microphone sound warm because computers no matter what do not computers do not have tubes and transformers in them they just got electronic circuits meaning the motherboard the cpu the ram they're, they don't have the tube. That's why the real gear, like a your tube um, transformer preamps, two microphones and all that, that's why, that's the argument. That is the missing component. That is the missing component. Um, this is the missing component um, in the digital world is why there's such a fight because they're trying to do everything they can that's why you see tape saturation plugins uh tube saturation plug they're trying to do uh processing in the in the in the digital world in your daw and plugins and all that to make it sound like tubes the thing is they've they're getting more they're getting closer and closer with the plugins but when you run through a tube microphone, through a good preamp, through a console, and so forth, it's like the digital's almost there, even though that's, that's an analog, still analog. It's like the digital is sounding close until you actually go through actual analog gear. So now we're dependent on software, how good your ADD, D to DA converter is, and the ability for it to, to process and sample sampling rate trying to get as much sample that's why they that's why a lot of high-end you know i'm running a 64 gigabyte 10 core processor mac so i can run my ad to da converter at 192 uh sampling rate to get as much detailed information on that sound as possible compared to only and i'm not saying that you can't do this with 44 100 or 48 um, but this is why they're trying to capture. That's why they say with a really good AD to DA converter and everything else, and the sampling and everything is in your computer process and the RAM and everything else. When you start recording and using, you know, that's why an, an eight gigs of RAM, sixteen bit two core processor, trying to it a lot of times. You may be able to get some good signals in there, but you start using a lot of other processing plugins and everything else to try to create this analog sound you're trying to do in the digital world. Um, it usually can't handle it. Um, so that is the fight. We're trying to get, we're trying to get this rich sound, but in the box with plugins and software, and there are a lot of people who said, no, you, you got, this is the way, you're only going to get it this way. And it's like, well, no, plugins of, plugin software's gotten a lot better getting to make it sound like this. That's the fight. Um, so, uh, that's going to do it for this video. I know it's a long video. Uh, trying to explain that. That's why I said this video is not going to be short. It's a long video. I hope you stay to the end. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, I hope that I call hope that kind of helped with why you see why there's always still the analog consoles outboard gear versus in the box and plugins why there's still such a fight it's 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 what the electronics are doing and what software is trying to emulate what the what the electronics are doing that's the that's the debate all right, y'all have a great one. Y'all have a, we'll see you in the next video.